tests with great and heavy heart and great sorrow that we welcome you to this critical press briefing. The Bank of Ghana, which is our central bank and the lender of last resort, has been dealt a catastrophic blow by the reckless, cruelest, and criminally minded NPP mismanagers of our economy. And this has necessitated an urgent call for, to save the Central Bank of the Republic of Ghana. Many media houses, including, including those of you here, have in the last week covered the sad and pathetic story of the Central Bank following the release of the annual report of the Bank of Ghana for the year 2022. Everyone who understood the crucial role of the Bank of Ghana will be rightly worried about this development. It is a total disaster. Ladies and gentlemen, unless we take an urgent and drastic action, this reckless, clueless, and criminally minded NPP mismanagers of the economy have laid the final groundwork for the collapse of our financial system and the economy which will worsen the already horrible conditions of the Ghanaian people. We in the NDC saw the red flags and have consistently warned of the mismanagement of the financial sector by the governor of the central bank and his team of incompetent deputies. This mismanagement was anchored on the jaundice supervision by Alaji Dr. Mahmoud Ubaumia the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, who is the brain behind the MPP's economic mismanagement team. Colleagues and ladies and gentlemen, only, only this week, in fact last week, the annual report and the financial statement of the Bank of Ghana was released. This report depicted the catastrophic decline of the Central Bank of Ghana into a bottomless pit. The report revealed the following astonishing fact. One, the Bank of Ghana recorded a staggering loss of 60.8 billion Ghana cities, which is equivalent of 6 billion US dollars. This is twice the amount we are to receive from the recent IMF bailout. 60 billion Ghana cities, representing 6 billion US dollars, meaning this is twice the amount we will be asking the IMF to give to us. This simply means that the reckless and mismanagement of the governor of the Bank of Ghana has costed the nation twice what we are struggling and sacrificing to receive from the International Monetary Fund amid its major conditionalities. Colleagues, the Bank of Ghana has also recorded a negative equity of over 55.1 billion Ghana cities. That, this simply means that the Bank of Ghana is currently bankrupt, or in other words, insolvent. In other words, the once prestigious Bank of Ghana, the mother of all banks in Ghana, have been bankrupted and collapsed by the NPP economic management team, led by Dr. Mahmoud Ubaumia, with the complicity of the governor of the central bank and his deputies. Friends from the media, many questions have been asked about how we arrived at this gloomy and sad situation, with some expressing surprise at the state of affairs of the central bank. For us in the NDC, the disaster did not come as a surprise. In fact, we in the NDC minority have always known that the Bank of Ghana was being mismanaged. We have made this point, time without number, that the Bank of Ghana is a classic example of how not to manage an economy. The NDC party is on record to have informed Ghanaians on countless occasions that the Bank of Ghana has been on a dangerous trajectory and indeed it has now become a crime scene with the dire consequences for us all. Fellow countrymen and women, after the inept and cruelest finance minister overborrowed and got Ghana locked out of the capital market due to our unsustainable debt obligations, the NPP government chose the easy, reckless, lazy, and criminal part of printing money. Unfortunately, 
This is how the governor and the central bank, the governor of the central bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, who is now known as the printer of money, has conspired with members of economic mismanagement team, led by Alaji Dr. Bawumia and the elect, inept finance minister Ken Oforiata, aka One Program, One Bond, to destroy Ghana's central bank. After this dastardly act of overlending to the government by the central bank, the then, they then proceeded to do the unthinkable. And the unthinkable is to write off a hoping 48.4 billion Ghana cities, about half of Ghana's government indebtedness to the central bank without parliamentary approval. This is illegal and criminal, and the NDC members of parliament will not allow this to pass. In fact, we will resist this. Both the mismanagement of the economy of, and our finances, the spectacular recklessness and ineptitude of the governor and his team has called into question the wisdom of leaving him, into the hel in, leaving him at the helm of affairs of the central bank. We now present to you the manifestations of the mismanagement and the ineptitude and the potential corruption at the Bank of Ghana, which was revealed by the 2022 annual report and the financial statement of the Bank of Ghana. One, the report revealed that millions of Ghana cities has been wasted on frivolous administrative expenses. The Bank of Ghana spent a whopping 131.6 million Ghana cities on motor vehicle maintenance and, and it's running and it's running in the year 2022 alone. In fact, this represents 114% increase over the previous year's expenditure on the same line item. Similarly, foreign and domestic travels of the Bank of Ghana cost the taxpayer a staggering 97.4 million Ghana cities, which again is an increase of 246% over the previous year's expenditure. The Bank of Ghana also dissipated another 8.6 million Ghana cities on directed, directest remuneration alone. This represents about 87% increase over the previous year's expenditure. Directest remuneration, 8.6 million Ghana cities. If you are to compare this to the previous year, this represents 87% increase over the previous year. This simply means that Ghanaians were charged a mismanagement fee to deliver the collapse of the central bank. The Bank of Ghana further claimed to have spent a colossal 357.9 million Ghana cities on banking supervision expenses for the year 2022 alone. The report further disclosed that the Bank of Ghana spent a whopping 67.9 million Ghana cities on computers, computers expenses alone, whilst communication expenses also amounted to 32 million Ghana cities. Communication alone, just to meet the press, they spent 32 million Ghana cities for one year, the year 2022. The report further disclosed that an undisclosed expense of 287.8 million Ghana cities was paid, undisclosed. They could not account for 287 million Ghana cities. I beg to ask, is the central bank the uh, Ministry of National Security? It is only the national security that can announce an amount that is undisclosed. So an amount of 287.8 million Ghana cities that they have failed to disclose to the auditors begs for certain questions. We also saw in the report that the Bank of Ghana indeed spent an amount of two million US dollars on gold watches alone. I don't know who they bought the watches for, whether it's for the governor and the deputies. Two million US dollars only on watches. Perhaps the more troubling fact is that having brought the Bank of Ghana to this terrible financial state, the governor and his deputies have found it prudent and expedient to invest 250 million US dollars representing almost 3 billion Ghana cities on another head office building, somewhere at rate. In our circumstances, this is the height of insensitivity in the management of the financing of a troubled country. A country that is in a major crisis. You have decided to award a contract worth 250 million US dollars 
representing approximately 3 billion Ghana cities for the purposes of getting yourself a new head office. We believe that this is insensitive and it is not right for the governor of the central bank to go into this expedition at this time. The Bank of Ghana's illegal printing of money is responsible for the depletion of Ghana's external reserve, which resulted in the unprecedented depreciation we saw in the year 2022, which obviously is the main cause of the hyperinflation of 54 point something percent we saw in the year 2022. It is important to state that the governor of the Bank of Ghana breached section 37 of the Bank of Ghana Act 2012, uh, 20, 2012 Act 612 and section 60 of the Bank of Ghana Amendment Act 2016, Act 918. In fact, the governor breached the laws of the central bank which calls for urgent action against the governor of the central bank. An estimated 850,000 people were further reported by the World Bank recently that they have this singular act of the Bank of Ghana has pushed them down the poverty line as a result of the hyperinflation that the central bank caused in the year 2022. Clearly, there's blood on the hands of the governor of the central bank and his deputies. It is now obvious that many more members of the Ekufuado Dr. Bawimia government will likely be keeping several more millions of dollars in their bedrooms and building a war chest to illegally buy electoral votes at both party primaries and the upcoming general elections in the year 2024. We will not be surprised that if members of the economic management team involved in this contest makes a strong showing. I wouldn't be surprised at all, because clearly everything shows that maybe uh, it's not only Madame Cecilia Dapa who has kept some money in her bedrooms. We in the NDC will continue to explore ways of rescuing this country to prevent it from the doom that has befallen several West African countries. Ladies and gentlemen, the IMF had made an offer to assist the government to develop a plan for recapitalization of the central bank. And that is why paragraph 18 of Ghana's Memorandum of Economic and Financial Policy, the MEFB, sent to IMF, stated this fact. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen of the media, fellow countrymen and women, let me assure you that very soon, Ghanaians will be made to pay for Bank of Ghana recapitalization levy, a tax to recapitalize the Bank of Ghana. So as we speak, because the central bank has collapsed virtually. It is, however, our position that we have so recklessly, the government of Ghana has so recklessly mismanaged the central bank and brought it to its news and cannot remain at the, affair, at, uh, at the helm of affairs of the bank without being held accountable. Those who have led this reckless and criminal conduct unleash economic hardship and financial distress on the, suffering, uh, on the suffering people of Ghana must be held accountable on this particular action. In fact, impunity of the highest order can no longer be tolerated by the suffering masses of Ghanaians. We must not allow this dangerous precedent to be set for future leaders. In this regard, we in the NDC call for the resignation, immediate resignation, of the governor of the central bank and his deputies within 21 days from today. We are resolved to embark on popular action to occupy the central bank and drive out the team of inept, callous, and criminally minded mismanagers of, of our finances to save the Bank of Ghana. What we will do is that the march will ensure accountability. Colleagues, the march to ensure accountability will begin in 21 days if the governor of the Bank of Ghana does not do the needful and pack bag and baggages out of that sacred institute, institution that he has unfortunately mismanaged. Dr. Ernest Addison and his deputies must go. There has to be an end to this impunity now. Fellow countrymen and women, let us arise and save the Bank of Ghana. This is the only bank we have that belongs to us directly. The central bank has a big role to play. We cannot allow the Bank of Ghana to be managed and be drawn to this level. We call on all of you 
that if the governor fails to act by resigning, you join us to march to occupy the Bank of Ghana in 21 days time to force him out and to force his deputies out because we cannot allow this to continue. Arise for Ghana. Fellow countrymen and women, arise for Ghana. Thank you and God bless you all. For more news, please visit our website graphic.com.gh or follow us on Facebook at Daily Graphic and on YouTube and Twitter at GraphicGH. Subscribe now.